Hi, welcome back to my channel. I am Lizzie from Holistically Lizzie, and this week I'm going to be talking all about food cravings, how to stop them, and my 10 best top tips. Now, I don't know about you, but I think I can speak for the majority of us when I say that we don't all eat just purely based on hunger and we don't all stop when we are full. That's because food has a lot of emotional triggers as well. So we eat when we're happy, when we're tired, when we're bored, when we're angry, when we're sad, when we're overjoyed, when whatever it is, we've, we all eat for a wide variety of reasons. So what can we actually do to stop these food cravings without telling you to do something like go for a walk or distract yourself? Okay, so let's get into my top 10 tips of the day. Tip number one, you need to not cut out a food group. I see far too many people doing this and this ultimately leads to food cravings. So whether you eat meat, whether you don't eat meat, whether you eat high carb, low carb, high fat, low fat, whatever it is that you're doing, make sure that you're not cutting out a food group. I see this a lot in the vegan community, this whole kind of high fat, low fat debate and in the paleo community of kind of high carb, low carb, what's best to do. What you want to do is just to include all food groups that are all there for a reason and they all provide the body with the nutrients, vitamins and minerals that we need in order to thrive. Now, when you restrict one of them, not only do you mentally think that you really want the thing that you're restricting, but also your body physically needs it to, to thrive. So it's really important to have a really good variety within the three main food groups, carbohydrates, fats and proteins. Tip number two is to stabilize your blood sugar. Now this is gonna really, really help because when your blood sugar drops, that's when you start to feel hungry um, and typically you want to reach for the high carb sugary type of foods. So a way to do that is to add a bit of protein to your meal or a little bit of fat. So what could this look like? Well, instead of having a fruit, you have a fruit with a little sprinkle of nuts or seeds or a bit of nut butter. Um, if you have a sandwich, instead of having a salad sandwich, you could have a bit of avocado with it or a bit of um, hummus or something which has a bit of protein or a bit of fat. And that's just gonna really help satiate you so you're not so hungry again, like quite so quickly. And also it's gonna keep your blood sugar much stable because it's gonna be much longer for your body to digest the food when you have a mix of protein, fat and carbohydrates. Tip number three is to eat a good food with the bad. Now, this was something that I did throughout my pregnancy and I've just continued to use it since. So what I mean is, is that when you're having something not so healthy, try and include something that is healthy alongside it. So you're not depriving yourself because what you don't want to do is just have a restriction on foods um, and a label of foods of good and bad as such. Um, but just to have an abundance of foods and always include in healthy foods within your diet. So for instance, if I was to have some chocolate, I would have a bit of fruit with it as well. Now, I might have just had a few squares of chocolate, but more than likely, because I've had the fruit as well, the fruit will fill me up a bit more that I'm less likely to have as much chocolate, if that makes sense. So whenever you're reaching out for something, a bit more indulgent and if you've got good portion control then great you go ahead but personally I find that I could eat a lot of indulgent foods so by having something healthy with it it just it just balances it out a little bit better. Tip number four is to get smaller amounts or bag up your treat size portions. Now this is a really really good one if you tend to just overeat or mindlessly eat. So it is really important to make sure that you're being mindful when you're eating. I did a video that talks about this a bit in, in the video how to lose fat without diet or exercise. So I'll link that below but eating mindful is really key to your weight loss goals. But we are all busy and sometimes we can't just sit down and save it each mouthful it's just not realistic sometimes we're out and about and we're just starving so what i suggest is just having a smaller size portion of something so 
try and buy ind individual bars of something rather than a family size pack of something or if you're for instance I really like nuts and seeds and dried fruits and things like that but I could eat packets of them and I wouldn't get fed up or bored or feel really full and that I needed to stop I would just keep on going so if you if you portion out your foods then it's much better and you're you're more likely to just eat that amount and then stop it because you've finished it and that's that. So there was a study done where they had two groups that went to the cinema and they each got were given a pot of popcorn and one group were um, they, they had I don't know they did something to the bottom of the popcorn and it was constantly being refilled and they would just continuously keep eating it um, and the other group just had a small amount of popcorn um, and what they found is that they just kept eating what they had so it makes no difference if it's there in front of you then you'll still just keep eating it regardless of whether you think that you've had enough or not so by portioning it out and um, the kind of treat foods and that can be really helpful tip number five is to eat more nutritious and bad foods now as much as I hate labeling foods as good and bad it's just easier to kind of and send the message over to you. So what I mean by eat more nutritious bad foods is to try and make healthier versions of the foods that you like or try and help to buy them in some way. So for instance eating more um, like cleaner unprocessed type varieties of things. So going back to popcorn because it's on the top of my head um, you can buy popcorn that's toffee caramel or you know these kind of processed ones which have like a thick weird sauce attached to them um, and if you love popcorn then you might really like that but nowadays there's also tons of packets of like natural um, popcorn with really delicious flavours that are free from loads of chemicals and preservatives that are just made from natural whole ingredients so it's really easy to find a healthier version of what you like and if you're making something at home instead of if, if you're not if you can't find something um, that you like you can't buy it then if you want to make something at home there's recipes for absolutely everything nowadays so so easy to find so finding a healthier version of what you like can make you feel like you've had a treat when actually you're just nourishing your body Tip number six is to drink more water. Yes, I talk about this all the time because it's so important. It helps to burn calories. People who drink water are much less likely to eat as much than those who don't. Your body needs to be efficiently hydrated in order to burn calories. And also, it really does fill you up. We often mistake our hunger for our thirst. And I feel like people say this all the time, but it's because it's actually true. So just keep on top with your water intake, carry a bottle around with you all the time. Since I started doing that, I find that I drink so much water than what I used to. So I really recommend doing that. Number seven is to wait 20 minutes. Now I know this is really, really hard to do, I get it. I finish my dinner and I think, oh, okay, I want dessert, it's dessert time now, what am I having for dessert? So I get that, however, just let your your main meal digests properly it takes 24 minutes for your stomach to get the signals that you've had enough now this can apply not just for dessert after dinner but just in general if you've had something sometimes we think that we want more than what we actually do so it's not to say if you want it if you don't want it then not to have it but just give yourself time to digest what you've already eaten before you make that impulsive decision Someone's joining me after her now, aren't you? Okay, so back on to the tips, we're on tip number eight, and that is to plan your meals. So this is just really helpful um, for reducing food cravings because when you don't plan your meals, things just to be tend to just be a bit hit and miss and tend to eat more on the run, which means that you're not having something as balanced. Um, so you're feeling more hungry or you're just kind of on the spare of a moment trying to just pick up something because it's convenient. So planning meals is really key to success. Um, I really, I, I think this is probably not the most important, but it's, it's one of the top, top important things that you want to do. 
um, if you're looking to change your diet preparation is key so planning your meals ahead of time really really helps tip number nine is to make sure that you're eating enough during the day so when I hear of people who don't eat all morning and then you know they're at work and they haven't had anything and then they go home and eat absolutely everything in sight it's because you're just not eating enough um, in the daytime so if you tend to have a lot of nighttime cravings then that could be um, one of the big factors um, to consider so make sure that you're eating enough balanced meals within the day you don't need to have snacks all the time um, just make sure that you're eating really good solid meals that fill you up for a good few hours at a time um, and if you do feel hungry and if you're in a mode of kind of calorie restriction then you really need to get that out of your head it's not about restricting calories because at some point your body will want to make up for it so just listen to your body if you're hungry then go ahead and eat and finally tip number 10 tip number 10 is to wait for three days okay what what on earth do I mean by this? Wait three days, that's usually how long it takes to get a craving out of your system. So if you found that you've just had a huge chocolate craving and for some reason you can't stop eating chocolate all the time and every single day goes past, you just want everything chocolatey, then just give it three days to kind of reboot your system, cut it out for three days and you'll notice after those three days that you really won't be that bothered anymore so that's a good kind of short-term measure if you feel like you've gotten a bit off track with something in particular okay so that's it for this video um comment below if you found these tips helpful and which one that you would implement um next time that you have a craving and as always please like and subscribe to my channel it will really really help um, and let me know if there's anything else that you'd like me to talk about in the future. Okay, so thanks for watching!